So I would like to welcome everybody in the audience. Today, I want to talk to you about the trauma-induced coagulopathy. So our research team want to understand this mechanism in molecular, uh, in deeper molecular ways. So let's begin with a picture. Here you can see my picture of a patient arriving to the ER who's having, for example, chest, abdomen, and extremities injuries. When, you, when this patient has multiple injuries, then you speak about polytrauma. In the course of polytrauma, trauma-induced coagulopathic could form. This disease through shock, infection, inflammation, can lead to multi-organ failure, thromboembolism, and death. So what is exactly this trauma-induced coagulopathy? In the strict sense of word, trauma-induced coagulopathy is a state of hemostasis when procoagulant, anticoagulant processes are present, and there is thrombocyte dysfunction. So on the next slide, I would like to walk you through uh, the coagulation pathway. As you know, there are two ways to activate it. There is the intrinsic pathway, the ex extrinsic pathway, who both met, meet on the common pathway, and so the fibrin web is formed. On the other hand, you have fi fibrinolysis, which degrades this fibrin web. As you all know, platelets or thrombocytes are essential for a healthy clot formation. These platelets have different kinds of granules containing different kinds of molecules and cytokines, cytokines, which can activate the other platelets and cause inflammation. So what were our objectives in our study? Firstly, we wanted to collect good quantity and quality thrombocytes from human blood samples and then we wanted to permeabilize these thrombocytes to make them able for respirometric measurements. And then, in the end, we wanted to collect blood samples from polytrauma patients with higher than 16 injury severity score, and then measure the coagulation with viscoelastometry, the thrombocyte function with aggregometry, and the mitochondrial function with respirometry. So here you can see our study protocol. From the uh, September 2021 to uh, June 2023, we had 113 patients arriving to the ER of Seged. And we had to exclude 46 patients because they met our exclusion criteria, what were younger than 18 years, isolated head injury, <coughs> anticoagulant therapy, and pre-hospital transfusion. So in the end, we had 67 patients, and then we uh, only analyzed 57, and we formed a healthy control group of 49 people. So what's this injury severity score, what I told you two slides before? It's a clinical sc score for the emergency medicine, assessing how bad the patient is injured. So here, everybody region, every body region gets an abbreviated injury scale score from one to six, which you can see here. And the three most effective area are squared and then added together. And when the score is higher than 16, then you have a polytrauma patient. So let's talk about the methods what we used for the Investiga investigation of the coagulation, we used the method so-called rotational viscoelastometry. This method is a point of care method. When you put your blood sample in a rotating cup and there's a standing pin, and as the clot forms, it creates friction and the device measures the rotation of the cup and creates a such graph. Here, we measured the CT, the clotting time, the which, which gives us information about the beginning of the coagulation, 
MCF, maximal cloth firmness, maximal lysis, is, which gives us information about the cloth firmness. In this method, we used XTES, which measures the extrinsic coagulation pathway. And FIB test, which measures uh, the levels of fibrin in the blood. So let's move on to the thrombocyte functional test. Here, we used platelet aggregometry. This